All right, this lesson is on variation, and a good place to start is to talk about what variation is. Well, quite simply, to vary means to change. And in math, what we talk about is if one quantity varies as another quantity, those numbers are said to be proportional to each other, which means as one of those quantities change, the other one changes too, and it happens in a constant manner. And if they do ch change in a constant manner, we say they vary constantly with each other. And then there is a constant k called the constant of variation that defines that relationship. And we'll see here with an example what that means. And the constant k is a very, very important aspect to variation. So let's look at an example. So let's say you're in a car and you're driving at a constant rate of 20 miles an hour then the distance formula tells us that we can use the equation d equals rt to define that relationship where d is the distance, r is your speed or your rate, and t is the time. So basically how, f how far you go is determined by how fast you go times how long you drive. And since you are going a constant speed, then what we can say is that r, which is 20, would be our constant of variation. And it's no different than k, it's just here we're using an r because traditionally we say d equals rt, but no difference. So we can say that d equals 20t. So here our k, or in this case our r, is 20. This is an example of direct variation. One thing to notice is that as t gets bigger, d also gets bigger. And if you don't believe me, try some try some different numbers for t. Put in a 2, and then put in a 3, and then put in a 4. And see what happens to d when you multiply it by 20. And that's an important aspect of direct variation. So let's look at the different kinds of variation. There are four basic types of variation equations. The first one we just looked at in our example, and that's direct variation, which says, if A varies directly as B, then as B gets bigger, A gets bigger. And notice that our constant K gets multiplied by B. And, and kind of compare that to our next type of variation, which is called inverse variation, which says that if A varies inversely as B, then as B gets bigger, A gets smaller. And the way we would set that up is A equals K over B. So really, inverse is set up as a division problem where B is on the bottom and K is on the top. And we'll do an example of that here in a few minutes too. Uh, the next type is called joint variation, which says if A varies jointly as, well in this case there'd be more than one variable, B, C, D, E, F, and so on then as B or C gets bigger, A also gets bigger. And notice that this is kind of like direct, except there's more than one number being multiplied by K. And finally, we have a, something called combined variation, which has inverse variation and either direct or joint variation. So if we say A varies jointly as B and C, and maybe inversely as D, then we could say that a equals k times b times c. Notice we're multiplying by the ones that are jointly varying and then inversely is division so we put the d on the bottom. The three steps to solving all of these variation problems that you'll see are as follows. First you'll set up your general equation using the variables and you'll be able to sometimes make up your own variables and sometimes the variables will, variables will be given to you. But then what you're going to do is plug in a first given set of numbers and you'll solve that to find your k. And remember k is constant. And then step three is you will use that k that you found from step, step two and a second set of numbers that they'll always give you to find the unknown variable. So let's see how that works. This problem asks if x varies inversely as y and x equals 40 when y equals 0.6. Find x when y is equal to 30. So let's go through our three steps. Step one 
is to do our setup. So we need to set up our variation equation. And we do that by looking at this first part right here where it says if x varies inversely as y. So we know we're going to have an inverse variation problem, which means we're going to have we're going to have a variable on the bottom. And so we have x which varies varies can be placed where your equal sign is inversely as y. So that's it. We're done. That is our variation equation. Now step two is to find k. So we're going to use the second piece of our information up here where it says x equals 40 when y equals 0.6 to find our k. So we plug in 40 for x and we have our k and 0.6 for y and we simply multiply both sides by 0.6 Right? We multiply both sides by 0.6 and we end up with k is equal to 24. And so for step 3, we need to find x, the variable that they're asking us for. And so from step 1, we know that x is equal to k over y, but now we can say that x is equal to 24 over y. And it asks us specifically to find x when k, or when, I'm sorry, when y is equal to 30. Let's put, put them in the right place. When y is equal to 30. And so when we divide 24 divided by 30, we end up with x is equal to 0.8. So let's put this all together in one last example. And we see here that we have the force needed to keep a car from skidding on a curve varies inversely as the radius of the curve and jointly as the weight of the car and the square of the speed. If 210 pounds of force keeps a 3,000 pound car from skidding on a curve of radius 600 feet at 25 miles an hour, what force would keep the same car from skidding on a curve of radius 500 feet at 55 miles an hour. So again, let's go through our three steps. And our first step, again, our setup, is spelled out right here for us. The force. So let's, let's go ahead and, and label our variables this time. I'm going to let F be our force. And what else do I need here? Uh, keep a car from skidding on a curve varies inversely as I need a radius. So let R equal the radius and jointly as the weight of the car so I'm going to let W equal the weight and the square of the speed so S is equal to the speed so let's see if we can set up our variation equation and I'm going to go ahead and set up one big fraction and just decide what's going to go where based on what kind of variance we have and it should be obvious that right now that we have a combined variance here. We have some joint, we have some inverse, and let's see how this is set up. So I'm going to put my k right here on top. And so just like I said before, I see the force that is, that is needed varies inversely. So I'm going to put my force over here to the left. And when I see the word varies, I know that's where my equal sign goes. And inversely as the radius, and what does that mean? Well, it means my very radius goes on the bottom. And jointly, and jointly is directly, so I'm going to multiply by k as the weight of the car, so times w, and the square of the speed, so times s squared. And that's it for step one. That is our variation equation. So let's go to step two. And that's where we get our next sentence here. If a 210 pound force, so F is 210. And remember, now we're solving for K. So I put my K up here. 210 pounds of force is required to keep a 3,000 pound car. So that is our, that's our weight from skidding on a curve of radius 600 feet. So our radius is 600 feet at 25 miles per hour. So we have times 25 miles per hour. But of course, in our, uh, variation equation that 25 miles an hour is squared. So now we need to solve this for k and so I'm going to multiply both sides by 600 and I, I get 126,000 126, 
equals k times, and I go ahead and multiply this out, and I ended up with 180, or I'm sorry, 1,875,000. So 1,875,000. And when I divide both sides by that 1,875,000, I end up with k is equal to 0 0.0672. And so I found my k, and I go ahead and take it in step three, and I plug in and it asks me what force would keep the same car, so that means our weight is the same, from skidding on a curve of radius 500 feet at 55 miles an hour. So it's asking us for f, and now we plug back into our equation from step one. We know our k times, we know our weight is 3,000, and now the car is going 55 miles an hour, so we say 55 squared, and we divide that by 500, our new radius. And so we got a little bit of calculator work to do, and we end up with F is equal to 1,219.68. And so the force, the force required is 1,219.68 pounds.